to assemble a butterfly parasol. All of the pieces were already been cut out of my inspiration. I've got the circle that's our base that we're going to glue together, the parasol base, and I have a big butterfly for the center, three smaller butterflies for decoration, and the border pieces. Cut out four, but I don't know if I need three or four. It kind of depends on how steeply we pull in the sides of the parasol base. Now, these are awful detailed, and I want to give them some edge detail, but I really can't or don't want to ink all of those edges, so I'm going to use paint. So I'm going to start actually with a butterfly, the big butterfly. I want it flat and started bending it to see how I want the dimension. Okay, pal. Okay, so I'm going to use on this, I'm just going to use a little gold paint. This is Folkart Metallic Inca. Don't need very much. I'm just going to do the edges. Just slightly brushing them, almost dry brushing them. Fast forward the video a little bit because it's going to take me a few minutes. But just keep it nice and thin so that you don't hide any of the pretty pattern on paper. Now I'm going to finish this, this in just a second, but this is two-sided paper and when we put it on the top, we're going to fold up the sides. So you're going to be able to see a little bit of the back. So you're going to want to make sure to come in and do the same painting uh, for the edges on the back of the butterfly too, because it will show a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this one. Okay, so the gold on this butterfly is all done on both sides. I want to do a little bit of a darker color to define the body just a touch. And I'm going to use some metallic antique copper for that. I'm almost out. Bottle's almost empty. All right, so I'm just going to use a tiny bit. Tiny, tiny bit. And I. It's a little darker, a little bit right there up the center, a little bit heavier on the tail. Okay. Do that on the same back, just get that a little heavy there. This part's going to be glued down, so it's not, but you do want the tail and the antennae at least in the head a little, in case I peek up. Okay, this butterfly is all painted. It was very thin, so it dried almost instantly. I'm going to take it very carefully. I'm going to keep the body flat and just bend up carefully. Don't want a, a, a sharp fold. Just a curve to bring the wings up. Then I'm going to come in and just lightly curl my fingers, little bits of the wings. Just give it a little bit of a curl. Gives it a nice, graceful shape. Lots of dimension. Okay, we're going to set that aside. We set that aside over with the base. The base doesn't need any ink on it or anything because all the edges are going to be covered. Let's see. So we'll do this little butterfly next. 
I think I'm just going to use the uh, same antique copper that I just used on the other one and do the body here. Okay, now I want to really dry off my brush a bit. It's way too heavy here. Just really lightly come in and do around those cutouts. Just around the edge, very lightly. So, the whole edge is covered. It's like it's been very, very lightly done. Do the other side. Gotta make sure the brush is almost dry. Dry out the edges. This is a single sided paper, single plum printed on one side. So on the back, it still might show a little bit because I'm going to bend it up the same way. I'm going to make the body dark like I did the other one, maybe a little darker since it's one sided. And then I'm going to swirl my paint over the whole thing. Not solid, a little splotchy. Just so that if you get a glimpse of it, I mean this is metallic paint, so if you get a glimpse of it, it's a little shiny and it looks like there's a little something sort of coordinating pattern going on there. Alright, so we got real light on the front, heavier on the back, it's off a brush. Alright, I'm going to do the same banding. It's just a little guy. Curve that wing out. Ah, I forgot to do on the other one. I'll bring it back. I'm gonna bend, just gently bend those antennae up a little bit. Do it on this one too. Okay, I'm gonna set that one aside with the other ones. And let's do this one now. This one's already pretty shiny. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. I'm going to use a uh, metallic copper on this one. It's a little lighter than the uh, metallic antique copper. A little bit more orange. Get my brush a little drier. I want to do it nice and light, just like I did the last one. Just a little teeny bit of paint on my brush. It just gets in there and gets the edges. Lift up and check it, and it looks good. If I get too much paint on any spot, I just wipe it off with my finger. I don't, I, I want a little bit of a smeary bit around there. I don't want it absolutely perfect. Is If it's absolutely perfect lines and everything, it looks more like a coloring book picture than like something from nature. Because out in nature, light's going to reflect off and hit things differently, so they're not going to look all perfectly smooth and even. Guess, I'm not typing paper anymore. It's like the other ones, maybe they're even a little lighter because this is so shiny and textured in here. It kind of looks like a nice little lighter on the body than I did the other ones. Again, pattern on the back, although not crazy about the pattern on the back of this one. I just love the, that one. So, go a little heavier on the antenna and head on the body. I'm going to go ahead, just like I did on the one that was blank on the back, and uh, smear my paint all over the back of this one instead of trying to preserve the pattern. Like I said, not crazy about this pattern. I'd rather see the metallic copper. It looks a little bit better this way.
so. All done with painting. It's a little wetter than the other ones because that I'm pretty heavy on the back. Drink the coffee. Okay, so we bend it up along the edges of the body and curl it over. Curl these little ends here a little bit extra. And we'll bring up the antenna just a little. And so that was like one more butterfly. Let's turn it over so you can get it all dry. I can turn it over. Let's see better. Okay, I'm going to do the I'm going to keep with the copper on this one really lightly. I have the dark colors on the other three butterflies, three small butterflies. So I really want that middle big butterfly to stand out a lot. Here's my brush. But this one, this one has a lot of shiny sparkle on it. I don't want to hide any of that, so I'm going to go very lightly around the edges. Mmm, and this metallic copper looks really nice on it. Little edge there that didn't cut perfect. Let me turn that up. The glittery spots on this paper, it's one of those papers that they're almost like embossed glittery spots. Sometimes it's hard to get the right settings to cut the paper good and cut through those spots. So I, I cut what I would normally do for this type of paper and then just go through it a second time to get through those glittery dots, but sometimes you still get a little stray piece or something. Rather than cutting it again, I think it's easier just to trim it off with a little pair of scissors. all painted. I'm going to bend the wings along the body. Curl them. And fold up my antennae. Curl up my antennae, not fold. Alright, so all the butterflies are done. I want to do the border pieces. Go put a diagonal pin on my paper. I'm going to use the darker if I have enough of it here. Uh, antique copper. Get some more out. And just want to dry brush the edges like did the other ones. Get too much paint on there. Getting in and getting these. Um, Cutout spaces. It's almost like you're stenciling the paper underneath, and then you know, what, what you want is the paper that sticks. Make sure you get along the top edge too. Now this paint has a little shimmer to it. After I get this paint on, I'm going to give the borders. A lot more shimmer. I might wait to do that part till after I get the whole thing assembled because I don't want it the glitter. I think I'm going to use um, some stickles, but uh, I don't want it to interfere with the glue sticking. find that I use paint a lot instead of inking my edges because I think I can get more control. And acrylic paint pretty much sticks to any surface and dries that you want it to. You don't need to worry about whether it's dye ink or, or pigment ink. You a huge range of colors that you want and you can mix your own anytime. And it's really cheap. I mean, you can use more expensive kinds like gold and stuff, but I think for the paper crafting, full carts and sometimes just the store brands are just fine. 
a little practice, you can get pretty much the same effects. And like on here, this is an awful detailed area. It would be really hard to do with an ink pad. But it's super simple to do with a paintbrush. I'm using a kind of just a small, inexpensive bristle brush. It's a round one. It doesn't really matter what you use. I like the round ones for doing this because they're kind of like the shape of a stenciling stipple brush, but tiny. And uh, I find the stippling brushes, you can use those. But they're a little stiff for doing this. Okay, so there's one. I'm going to... I've got three more. So it's going to be the same for all three. Um, I'm going to pause the camera while I finish up painting the other three, which is going to be identical to that. Oh, actually, I forgot. This is two-sided paper, too. And you're going to be able to see. You're going to want to do the back side, too. Completely forgot about that. So I'll do the back side of this one, and then I will stop the camera, pause it for me, finish up my other three, and warm up my glue gun. So here we go, finishing this side. Okay, we're back. Glue gun's on it. I'm going to start assembling the parasol. The parasol cuts out the base, so about an 11 and a half inch circle, with a line from the center out to an edge. I'm going to fold over one side over the other. You can decide how steep you want that peak to be or how flat you want it to be. That's why can't tell you exactly whether you need three or four of the border pieces. It depends on how much around you make it. I'm going to make mine about like that. It's overlapping about that much. I'm going to lift this up just a little bit. Careful not to burn myself. To set it in place, I'm just going to put a little glue right here on the corner. And bring that down. Just hold it till it sets really well. That's why I'm using hot glue for this. Usually, for all the paper stuff, I use the Scotch Quick Dry Tacky Glue. But for this, I need it to dry because it, it, it will give resistance and fight back. It would probably, if I clipped it with clothespins and was patient, would work just fine with the Quick Dry Tacky Glue. But it would probably take more patience than I have. So, hot glue it is. And I think attaching the border is going to be much, much simpler using the hot glue that sets super fast than using something where I would have to wait. Okay, now it's really optional whether you want to come in and add more glue right here or not. I'm going to put just a little bit. down that seam. Get rid of my gluey strings. Okay, and on the inside we still got a flap here. I'm going to add a little bit more glue to that. Just on the corner. So that there's no way it can flip up and look funny. Okay. So there you go. Now we're going to put the border on. You can see when I flip it over, I cut the border from the same paper. The, it's the flip side of it, the orange side, so it coordinates nicely. I'm going to start right here on the, at, at the seam, because when I put it on, we want it to come down at a 90 degree angle. We want it to be perpendicular to the edge, not sticking out flat. Let me see if I can get that. So It's going to be like that, not like this. Ooh, the camera. Let's try the glue. Let's try putting the glue on the hat this time. Or not the hat, the umbrella. Parasol. Put it directly there on the edge. See if we can get it to stick that way. Yay! We have success. Okay. So, my first idea. So, just 
do a couple inches at a time still. Right along the edge of the umbrella. Get the border right up against it. There, that way it was super easy. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and speed up the film a little bit and glue. Finish gluing until I get all the way around. Oh, I'll show you when I get to the... I'll keep going so I can start the next piece. Show you that. I didn't connect these because I thought it would be easier to handle them if they were short. So when I start this, I'll just make sure I start right there. So they line up, just overlap the little straight edges, about an eighth of an inch or so. Okay, now I'm right to the end. Let's see, doesn't quite get all the way to the edge. I've used three of my border pieces, so I'm just going to take just a snip off of my fourth one just to make it close up there. See if I can kind of make it overlap a little. be fine. It's the back of it. It'll be barely noticeable. Get finished getting the last hole on there. And a little more glue. Give me a little piece to close up that gap. Help connect that little border piece to the two longer border pieces. Okay, so there we go. Parasol, the border. I want to turn it around for me so it's facing. Front's facing right here, so it's facing towards me. So I can best place the butterflies. This one goes right on the top. So I want to right there, maybe leaning forward just a little bit. So put some glue right there on the point. I'll just stick the butterfly on there, a little hot. Hold it till it's in place. You can adjust 
curl with paper wings. After it all dries up. Now, two of the little seams are pretty vis visible at the front. I'm going to Use those as placements. Just trying to decide who goes to where. Yeah, I think I like it this way. So, the seams. Just put another little tray. Put the dot on the body of the butterfly this time. And I'm going to glue him this one right here. This one. going to do back here over the back seam. It's a little messy and you won't be able to see the back seam at all once that's there. Okay, so all the pieces are assembled. We're going to do a little bit more embellishment on the top of the parasol, then we're going to let it sit and dry. While we put together the handle. So, like I said, I'm going to use some stickles on it as soon as I reach over here to my supplies and find the right color. Got it. Okay, I've got two. This is uh, Fruit Punch Stickles. I'm going to use a little bit of that on the border. And this is some um, dimensional fabric paint. It's Crystal glitter, it dries clear white crystal glitter glue. I'm gonna put a little line of the crystal glitter glue all along in here to hide the glue gun seam. When it dries, it pretty much dries clear. It takes a little longer to dry than glitter glue. Okay, there's no reason to use the dimensional fabric paint here other than rather than glitter glue. I just happen to have it on hand. Sometimes I use it because it is dimensional and you can make little dots that are like you know, rhinestones or pearls. Whereas the glitter glue would dry flat. Now this goes on, it looks white when it goes on so it looks a little messy right now. I'm covering right over the, the hot glue, but when it dries it'll be clear and glittery. And I can always fill in another coat, another layer in there if I need to to make it nice and neat. I think I'm going to take a paintbrush. Get in there and spread that around. Make sure it is nice and neat.
I'm going to lay about it with this glittery paint. Add a little bit to the white petals. And here in this rose. A little bit more than that, the rose next to it too. Wherever the highlights are. They would have too much glitter. And the stickles. So, I'm just going to take this and smear it. A little bit. Just on the solid parts here. Not trying to do a neat outline or anything because once you start doing that you have to keep going and it's hard and it usually ends up looking worse than just kind of smearing it all over on purpose. I'm just going very light with this. Let's give it a little sparkle. So that's all done. It's going to sit. Let it sit and dry. For a couple of hours. In the meantime, we'll bake the handle. And then we'll attach the two together. make the handle, it's going to hold it, I'm using two sheets of 6 inch by 12 inch paper, this is uh, some scrap paper I have, it's about, it's pretty lightweight, it's not much any heavier than printer paper, but once it's rolled up, it's pretty strong. And I just took that, folded one edge, and I just rolled it up into a tight two. You want both to do that to two pieces, and you want them both to be the same diameter when you're done. As soon as I got it rolled up, I started wrapping tape around it. I have a couple more pieces of tape around this one. It was a little bit fiddly to do, but not very hard. I mean, you're just rolling and making it tight. Okay, so I'm going to tape these two pieces together. Right here in the center. You want to try to make this neat, but you're not going to see this. We're going to cover this with paper. So we also need to do this two slices of our decorative paper that are 12 inches by 2 inches wide. And those are going to cover this. So put a piece there. Now you could use a dowel for part of this and then just make a shorter piece here to make the handle, but we are going to need to bend it at the end to make if you for a handle, um, if, which is optional. Actually, my finished one's not going to have a handle. So I'm putting lots of tape here to make the seam not nice and strong, but this is going to be a decoration, not something you're going to be taking out to really keep the sun off of you. So it doesn't need to be, this needs to be strong enough that when it's sitting, wherever you have it on display, that it's not going to bend. Okay, so. I have two pieces here. So my, these are both 12 inches, so I guess my ones I started with were a little bit longer, but you can just trim them down. Okay? 
I'm going to cover what I made. Decorative paper. First, I'm going to start using tape because it's too hard to hold on there. I'm, my glue gun's heating up. I'm going to do the first edge with tape, which isn't going to be visible at all. Just line it up along there. Put the tape along the long edge. You're going to go all the way down. You can do this with hot glue. Tape's a little faster, a little less, less, less fiddly, and takes a little less coordination. Now, I just chose this length because that was the length of my paper. If you want a shorter or longer handle, just do whatever it is there. Now, I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to curl it just gently because I don't want to wrinkle the paper, but it's going to get a little, a little folds because it's pretty stiff. This is K & Company, one of their sets, and it's pretty much cardstock weight. So I'm not going to fold it over quite yet. I want to, I'm not going to finish gluing it yet. I just wanted to curl it make sure it was going to fit all the way around. You want to check that before you go any further. In case you didn't make your tubes the same width. If it doesn't go all the way around, you might need to cut wider pieces. So I'm going to tape the other side on. I'm going to overlap a tiny, tiny bit, about an eighth of an inch up there. So it's easier to work with it this way. Get them even. The tape's giving me a hard time. Cat here in my tape. I'm just using regular Scotch invisible tape. Give okay, it duck brand, not Scotch matte finish. Same stuff you use to wrap presents. easier to work with when we get to finish it. Um, see, my tubes are a little longer. My, so I'm just going to shorten this so it's even. Okay, so we're going to try to neatly tape these edges. It just, the, the paper just fights back. It has too much give, too much spring to it. So very neatly, the roll. Okay, good. All right, got both of these pieces. You can see where I had a failed attempt at using hot glue to seal this. So it didn't work for me. So I'm gonna close up the seam between these two. With a piece of scotch tape pieces to keep them even as I'm rolling. Okay, I'm going to roll it up nice and tight in the center there. Now, 
it's neater to do the pieces along the length. But when I'm rolling, it's a lot easier to keep it in place if I go around. So I'm gonna do that in the center one. I'm just gonna do around. And then you just keep rolling onto that piece of tape. Voila, it sticks. But since I'm using invisible tape, really, I rub it good, you're not gonna see it. And that's a good spot to aim to put the ribbon that we're gonna put around it when we're done. So working there from the center, the tape along the edge. do top edge. You have to really do have to push down pretty hard when you're doing this. You don't want to squish and wrinkle your paper, but you pretty much have to push down right to the point right before you do that. Okay. Just try to keep, keep it neat. These little wrinkles and stuff you see, they really disappear once you fold and tape that up. So we're going to tape along this top section. I don't know how it looks on the camera yet, with the video, but really it, that, that is the tape fairly even visible. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and finish taping the edge along the entire length Our handle piece. And then we'll create the actual bent handle at the bottom. Now I have the whole length. It's two feet long. And when we're done, we're going to be putting, when it's all done being shaped, we're going to glue it onto here. Now, I can't put my camera back far enough to show you. This is pretty long and pretty tall, so you're going to want to adjust that depending on how you plan on displaying it. If you plan on displaying it laying outside or somewhere that the bottom handle would be visible, then you're going to want to make the optional bent in like we're going to do in a minute. If you want to stick the end of it in the vase or something so that it stands up, then you might want to just cut off that length. Because we're going to use a length, this is about eight inches. That's what we're going to use for the handle. What we're going to do is grab. You gotta be brave here. You grab it right around it, eight inches. And then about the four inch mark, we're going to start bending. Brave. Bend it up. Yep, and in the wrinkle in the paper. Now try to pop out your tube as you're going along. Bend it and shape it. Now, okay, my squirt bottle. 
I'm going to give it just a little squirt just to make the paper easier to bend. Much easier. Just like that. Look at the bottom of the parasol. How cute that is. Okay, now we need to stick them. It's not going to stay by itself. See? So I need to stick some wire in there. I need to find my wire. Right. You can use any kind of wire that you have around. It doesn't have to be pretty. You can use floral wire, whatever. This is a, a, a like a 30 second inch piece of uh, brass, wi brass wire that I just happen to have around. I'm going to cut it. I don't need it nearly as long. It just needs to go up about like, you know, it's actually not too bad. So now I'm going to slide it in there, straighten this out again. Slide it up in there. Now we're going to bend again. This time the paper's going to give nice because we already marked it. Here we go. Shape that a little rounder. Now you've got the shaped handle. But then I'm just going to take a little button and lay around. I have a big collection of little buttons. It's a little button. If I back, you could use a bead. Anything that just fits in that spot. I just want to finish this off. We're not going to do that yet. We just want to find something that fits. First I want to put a little paint on here, that same shiny gold we used. This is the same paper that we used for, that I used for the um, center butterfly on the top. So I'm going to use a little bit of the same gold paint. brush. Just gonna see I'm not really doing anything too specific here. Just rubbing it on. And because it's acrylic paint, it just sticks to the tape that's on there just like the paper. You can't tell on there, but this is really sturdy. And you know, it's just made out of paper. Once you roll paper up, it gets pretty strong. So you really don't need to worry if you've stuck a ton of embellishments on your parasol top. It'll, this will hold it up. And if you're concerned that the paper's not strong enough, you can put more wire in it all the way up the length. Or you can squirt, you can literally take glue, the glue gun, and squirt right down the hole and let it fill up. And that'll make makes a pretty strong glue filled paper tube. Or you could start with a dowel and just tape this piece onto the bottom of the dowel then cover the whole thing in paper. Now, I'm going to trim. If you can see, after I pulled it up, it's a little uneven right there. Well, but I've got the, you know, I'm not going to trim it because I've got the um, wire sticking out. I'm just going to put extra glue on it. Or extra paint. It's not glue, it's paint. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna check the length. This is a little long for my taste. It really just depend, depends on where you want to display it. So I'm gonna just eyeball it here. I'm actually gonna cut off about eight inches of it. You probably wanna start less because you can't add it back on after you cut it off. And remember you have wire in there. You don't want to ruin good scissors. Get down there and cutting into the wire. And you could have of course done this before you painted it and stuff. Oh there we go. That's nice. Okay. So I cut off that much. Okay, now so now we need the hot glue again. Make sure all the gold paint is dry on my hands before I touch the parasol top again. Okay. So we're going to hot glue the button right there. To figure out where I had it. Here it is. Okay, this little button is vintage one. It has a butterfly on it. It's monogrammed, but it's like a butterfly. My wire's sticking out just a little bit here, so I'm going to take some jewelry pliers here and bend it over. Okay, let's glue here. Just stick it on. Let that dry and put a little bit more gold paint around the glue. It's kind of hot, it's a metal button. Okay, so then we're going to glue. And it's over. Here's our center. We want this nice and straight. So we're going to put a good plop of glue right here in the center. Hold it straight. Make sure you look at it and look level. And stick your hand right in there. You might want to check how If there's a certain direction you want the handle to go in relation to the top, make sure you turn it and check that before your glue sets. Just hold it here. Now I'm going to add a little bit more. Now, if you're concerned about that showing, you can paint over it, or you can sprinkle some glitter in there right now, but it's really not going to show. a lot of glue, so it's going to take a minute to dry. I don't think it's set enough to turn over. Just double check and squish your butterfly too much. Okay. Don't want to lay it down on its side until that glue has completely cooled because it'll bend. So I still it's still warm there. It's still pliable. So I'll fast forward. We'll uh, skip over this part and uh, be back in just a minute. Or I'll pause and be back in just a minute. Get my glue is set. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of gold paint around here. You really can't see the glue down here, but adding just that little bit of detail blends it together. So looks more like a, a solid piece. Okay, and it's dry. I'm going to go get ribbon while that's drying.
for the ribbon. I'll put my ribbon right around here. So visually, when you're looking at it, the point I'm going to put the ribbon is about halfway between the handle and the top. It's not really if you were to measure it, but visually that's where it is. I'm going to sit this down in front of me the way I want it to sit, the direction I want it to sit on display so that I can tie the ribbon right. Just for these colors, I'm using a piece of a turquoise orange and a piece of packing, jute packing twine. So lay them all together, about even. Biggest one on the bottom, middle, narrowest on the outside there. my defense. My children are both boys and I've had short hair my entire life pretty much. So I never got any real good bow tying lessons as a child. I never had any need with them with my own children. And this uh, packing jute, packing twine, it's stiff. I love how it looks, but it does give me a bit of a hard time. Okay, that's much better. Okay, so let's pull those. Fiddle with it a bit, make it nice and neat the way I want it. of the ribbon with my pinking shears just for a little fun. Cut the packing jute a little shorter. There we go. It's all done. Ready for me to take pictures? I can show you the whole finished thing.